Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the recap of the Serie A review. Uh, it's actually quite remarkable because this is the first time I think this season that Napoli is not on the background. But honestly I should have left out Milan because they didn't show up like almost at all. Uh, but be it as it may, we had a major result with Lazio beating Napoli. We had a major result with Roma beating Juve. However to me you saw the thumbnail. It was all about the memory of Davi Van Davide Astori, um, who had swept especially at the Fiorentina Milan game. And I think just that emotional weight, I said Milan didn't show up, but I think just that emotional weight, I had almost a feeling this is not gonna, this is not a, a game that Milan uh, will, is gonna, gonna win, probably even should win. In, in a way, because the, the emotional weight of that occasion, playing exactly on the day that Davide Astori uh, passed away five years ago. And I remember that one uh, because I had just been to Florence, I'd just been to Udine, and then he passes away in U U Udine um, while, where, while playing for Fiorentina, where they were uh, playing in this shirt. So it was always, it, it, it was kind of weird, the whole thing, and you know, whenever a uh, player in the prime passes away, it's just uh, odd. I honestly think that scheduling was meant that Fiorentina play in Milan on that day. Not only did the Astori play in his youth at Milan, but also Pioli was the coach at the time for Fiorentina. And you could see it when there was the, you know, the break in the game in the 13th minute, which was his uh, number. Um, yeah, the emotions overcame purely big time, and I think the emotions got also the better um, in a good and a bad sense. I mean, Fiorentina clearly had a chip on their shoulder. What all of this means is that the race for the top four got even cozier. Inter again, it's like the same situation we had two weeks ago, but it's every week there's one of the top uh, total four candidates is losing. And it's a constant changing and then you get a freak result like the Lazio win at Napoli and it becomes really, 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 really tight. Whereas on the bottom, things seem a, little, a whole lot more settled at this moment, although we may see that for the last spot it could get tight. Let's talk about a few highlight games. I mean, the other thing is that I think it was a very poor round of Serie A action because there was very little goal scored. I mean, there were uh, plenty of nil-nil draws as well. And I think that the marquee matchup uh, from the table was Napoli against Lazio. Sarri, another emotional game. Sarri returning to the team that he brought more almost to glory and just couldn't deliver it. And uh, in a, um, a presser, he basically said the difference between uh, Sarri's Napoli and uh, Spalletti's Napoli is that Spalletti's Napoli is going to win the title. And he might as well, uh, it might as well be that, uh, where it, that uh, back then there was an invincible Juve side and there's no invincible team at the moment, except that it is Napoli. However, Lazio played it really, really smart. Uh, yes, you cannot hold off Napoli totally, but they did it about as well as you can do that. Uh, really keeping the spaces tight, Napoli had a really hard time breaking down Lazio, uh, creating few chances and whatever chances were created were a little bit more on the, Nap uh, on the Lazio side to be honest. And then you win it with a brilliant Vecino strike. Um, it reminded me of the one goal that uh, in last uh, year's Ch uh, Champions League that uh, Thiago scored for Liverpool. However, that one was even sweeter because it didn't touch the ground. Vecino's goal, it was the perfect drop kick. Um, it touches a little bit the ground, but it's still what a shot. I mean, this is why you want to do a drop kick because it just accelerates the ball and it takes this very satisfying curve that it goes below and then up and rises up up, up again. It was, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't save that one. There was only one chance for Easy Osiman to equalize, but honestly, uh, Lazio saw that out. And it's the second loss for Na uh, Napoli this season, and no one really thinks that this is going to really matter. And I want to see how it is going forward, because of course Champions League is another objective that the Napolitans have in mind. Um, but I also, the 
the distance is too big and Napoli will get enough points against the lower uh, teams. They, they probably don't even have to win the big matchups anymore. However, this is a big one for Lazio because they're, those are three points that probably no one expected from them. Uh, I already said that the Fiorentina-Milan game, there was a lot of emotional weight on it, but uh, it was Fiorentina who bossed the first half and probably should have taken the lead. Uh, Milan really in our show showing up and it's again if Leao is not playing Milan are not playing and even uh, uh, Leao in not good form as he has been of late makes the difference uh, I I actually think that the Catalari didn't play all that badly he actually created a good chance but there was just something missing for Milan and uh, with Rebic up front uh, he had a stinker of a game on the other hand as I said uh, Fiorentina really stepped it up they always play home uh, uh play well against milan uh especially at home but milan kind of was lucky enough to get out of this first half that is uh, with still being goalless however right when the second half kick starts when you really thought oh yeah maybe we can get back into in, in this game tomori uh, brings on Ikono, Ikono in the box I don't even think, he, did he need to do it? Because Joe was going right, right there and let him take the shot because Mignon is also there. It was not necessary. It was a clear penalty. Nico Gonzalez steps up. It's 1-0 Fiorentina. Uh, Milan tried to mount a car, uh, car comeback. Would have gotten a freak penalty that never was one. I don't know what the referee saw that one. I mean, I would have taken it, honestly. But I also don't understand what Pioli was thinking. I mean, of course, you bring on uh, Ibra for Giroud. That uh, I understand. Uh, Origi for Rebic. Yeah, I mean, one third for another. But what really got me is, why do you bring Bakayoko? The guy's nothing. I mean, bring on Salah, make us a little, a little bit sooner. Give me Adli, who will who, who then bring for the Catalan. I don't want to see Bakayoko for playing for Milan because he's shit. Jovic in the 80th, 87th heads it in, makes it 2-0 for Fiorentina. Um, and then Adli actually creates one. Salah makes play to De Hernandez, who just before the end of, of the game uh, lashes one in. It's 2-1, but honestly, uh, if that would have been a 3-0 for Fiorentina, it would have been uh, more indicative of that game. Credit to Fiorentina, they made the life of Milan hard, they pressed them out, and Milan was just lifeless. I am a little bit hoping that this has to do with the Big Spurs game coming up this Wednesday, um, and that is not a fallback to uh, worse times. But yeah, <laughs> my favorite phrase, we gotta see. Uh, Sunday, 2-0-0, uh, nil, nil, especially Sampdoria, Salernitana didn't do anything uh, for anyone. I've, I would say a similar Spezia, Elas Verona. This is just relegation battle over and over and over again. Inter playing in their away jerseys at home against Lecce, which was also one of those. Uh, there were also a few weird jersey matchups. Uh, this was one of them. Uh, so yeah, uh, getting a very e easy win with two really nicely played goals. I mean, Barella assisting Mkhitaryan at the 29th and uh, even Dumfries to uh, Lautaro Martinez. That looked good, but it was all that I expect. Uh, Inter is very predictable at home. They always win and very unpredictable away from home because there they can be upset. And so it proved again. Um, very much emotional atmosphere was also for Roma Juve. It was not a good game, to be honest. However, I had also a brilliant winner through uh, Mancini, a, a long range shot. Um, yes, there were also a few chances for Juve in there. I think Quadrado hit the outside of the woodwork at one, one point. Um, I thought first have maybe slight advantage Roma, second have actually thought that Juve were a little bit better. Um, and then we also have to talk about Moise Ken, uh, who comes on and within seconds gets sent off for something completely unnecessary. He got the free kick. Why do you need to kick the Roma player? You basically hand Roma the victory right there. Uh, one entertaining game this weekend was Sassuolo against Cremonese. Of course, almost no one watched that one, I would assume. Uh, I didn't either, but I saw some uh, a, a, a little bit where Sassuolo had actually two nil lead. But this Cremonese team, I have a feeling we might see another comeback. We may see another comeback because this one is not give give, give him up. Two nil down at the half. Cyril Dessas comes back. It is two two in the eighty third minute, but then they lose through an eighty uh, ninety second by Rami winner, and then Torino. Also playing in special jerseys that I think don't look that 
bad, except why is the back where the name is white? That that was weird, but it was kind of celebrated ten years for with Suzuki. Um, thoroughly do dominating Bologna. And Bologna is also, you know, one week great, the other week, hmm, yeah. I mean, they had a good run, uh, to be honest. But uh, after winning against Inter, then losing to Torino, uh, a Torino team that almost beat you, it also has has uh, doesn't sit quite well. But you know, uh, clear mid-table teams, you don't you don't see a constant form there, and Torino don't, they definitely uh, deserve the win. And the goal by Jan Caramo was actually really really nicely done. The footwork was excellent, and there were more chances. Uh, there was not much for Torino. Uh, for Bologna in there. And so, I uh, said it already in the preamble, it's tight. It's really, really, really tight for the top four spots. Uh, Inter only three points ahead of Milan, and it's between those four teams that get three spots. I don't think now, unless Juve get the 15 points back, at which they're level with Inter. That is kind of the Demo sort of Democles hanging above it. Will Juve get the 15 points back? Um, that may change things a little bit. But uh, goal di di difference. Milan is now uh, outside of the top five because of goal difference. Um, and there is still the head-to-head -head with Roma, where you have 2-2 two -two at home. If you win at uh, Roma, uh, you know, it might go the other way. But it's only one goal. So it's a really, really tight battle. I would actually think Milan should prevail, but you know, Lazio Roma are not easy opponents. We have, a, as we'll see, a derby coming up. On the bottom, it's now uh, very tight between Verona and Spezia, although it's still three pretty points, but it's Cremonese and Samsung Torre that look that they're out of it. But as I said, Cremonese, maybe, 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 maybe. Up top, Napoli. It's not 18 points, it's 15 points. It's still, you're gonna win the title, uh, which is rather amazing overall. Um, expect the standings here, Lazio will be the one uh, from the outside looking, although I actually would prefer, I no, not prefer, but I have a feeling that Lazio could outdo Roma. I don't trust this Roma team a whole lot. On the other side, I, would, uh, I wouldn't mind having this top four, although, you know, I would probably take uh, Lazio over Inter. Let's state the obvious there. Uh, Verona still the one going down uh, in that table. I give it the upcoming two weeks. Um, I think Lazio have an interesting one against Bologna and Napoli, another home game against a nasty opponent with Atalanta, also a team that have, have been upsetting them. Uh, other than that, Roma, uh, Sassuolo should be a win. U.S. Sampdoria should be a win. Milan against Salentana should be a win, but that is one that makes me actually quite nervous uh, because Salentana Sal 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 have, have always the ability to strike against Milan. But it's then the next week, and I don't know if I do a Serie A review video next week, uh, but where we have two mega ties, Lazio, Roma. This is probably one of the biggest Roman derbies in memory. And then... Inter Juve, it's also a nice one. I don't like that those two are back to back to, to be honest. Milan, a very uh, difficult trip to Udine because Udine is always a hard game to go to. That was it. Rather a short one, but you know, um, there was actually not too much to talk about in Serie A this weekend. So uh, there, there, there we go. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!